I felt like there was something seriously wrong. I said these weren't human doctors. This was an alien face. Many people believe in aliens, but some people swear they have met them and even traveled to their planet. You're a storm chaser, like UFOs every couple weeks. I'd reverse that. It's almost like they're chasing me. Are these people con artists or just deranged? You saw these planets how? Kind of a space. Join us as we look at some of these encounters. 20. Elizabeth Clara, the alien spouse. Elizabeth Clara was a South African woman who, beginning in 1956, publicly claimed to have been contacted by aliens several times between 1954 and 1963. Her first trip allegedly occurred when she was seven years old, and she was among the first women to claim a sexual relationship with an alien. She advocated for a better world and believed in cosmic consciousness. In her book, Beyond the Light Barrier, she attempted to impart a message of peace, love, understanding, and ecology, which she attributed to the superior wisdom of a sophisticated and flawlessly utopian Venusian culture. She pushed conspiracy theories about an international cover-up that kept crucial information hidden from the public, and she said she was threatened with abduction to expose facts regarding alien technology. Experts concluded Clara's claims were generally poorly substantiated, despite some of them being corroborated by witnesses. 19. Alien Sighting Thumbnail In our thumbnail, we can see an alien in what looks like an interrogation room, waiting to be questioned. He looks like most aliens we've all seen in movies, but is he real? 18. George Adamski George Adamski was a well-known Polish-American novelist in UFO circles and, to a lesser extent, popular culture. He presented various images of extraterrestrial spacecraft from the 1940s and 1950s, claiming to have met nice Nordic alien space brothers and flown with them to the moon and other worlds. Adamski was the first and most prominent of several alleged UFO contactees who rose to fame in the 1950s. He identified himself as a philosopher, teacher, student, and saucer researcher. But most investigators dismissed him as a charlatan and scam artist, concluding that his claims were an elaborate fraud. Adamski wrote three books on his encounters with Nordic aliens and his trips on their spaceships. The first two books were bestsellers, selling 200,000 copies each by 1960. In addition to his contributions to ufology in the United States, Adamski's work gained popularity in other nations, particularly Japan, and inspired numerous images of aliens and UFOs in post-war Japanese culture and media. 17. Gail Perez, a space traveler. In fiction, frequent story arcs include ESP, time travel, and teleportation. So why not? It's a fascinating thought, especially since scientists believe it's quite plausible. According to folklore, in October 1593, a Spanish Empire soldier named Gil Perez was miraculously transported from Manila, Philippines, to Mexico City's Plaza Mayor. The soldier Soldier's claim to have come from the Philippines was disbelieved by the Mexicans until his tale of the assassination of Gomez Perez das Marinas was confirmed months later by passengers on a ship crossing the Pacific Ocean with the news. In 1908, folklorist Thomas Alabone Janvier described the tradition as current among all classes of the population of the city of Mexico. 20th century paranormal investigators who believe the narrative have proposed teleportation and alien abduction as possible explanations. 16. Peter Faust, Abducted by Aliens Peter Faust used to refuse to discuss his idea that he had been abducted by aliens several times since he was a child. However, decades after claiming he was initially experimented on, the former chef and hotel manager thinks the lessons from the aliens have improved his life. Speaking on The Oprah Winfrey Show, he indicated that he wanted to talk about his experience in case others were going through the same thing but were unaware of what was going on. He used to be afraid to talk about it. When Oprah asked if he recognized how crazy it sounded, he agreed with her. He had to deal with his own lunacy and accept that it was insane for him to think this before before he could talk to others about it. He began having memories as an adult and was terrified, so he sought the assistance of a psychiatrist. He began regression therapy, which triggered further memories of past events, including the night he said he was abducted. He couldn't remember his first experience when he was eight years old. He knew something happened in the middle of the night that he couldn't explain and that his imagination couldn't have conjured it up. It stayed with him for a long time. He went on to claim that he wanted to pretend he had merely had a horrible dream, which he did for years, until he finally accepted what happened. 
2015, Charles Hickson. The Pascagoula abduction was an alleged UFO sighting and alien abduction in 1973, in which Charles Hickson and Calvin Parker claimed to have been abducted, investigated, and then released by aliens while fishing near Pascagoula, Mississippi. On the evening of October 11, 1973, 42-year-old Charles Hickson and 19-year-old Calvin Parker reported to the Jackson County Sheriff's Office that they were fishing off a pier on the west bank of the Pascagoula River in Mississippi when they heard a whirring, whizzing sound, saw two flashing blue lights, and saw an oval-shaped object 30 to 40 feet across and 8 to 10 feet high. Parker and Hickson claimed to be conscious but paralyzed, as three creatures with robotic slit mouths and crab-like pincers led them on board the UFO and examined them. Following the occurrence, Hickson conducted interviews and lectures, appeared on television, claimed to have had other contacts with aliens, and self-published the book UFO Contact in Pascagoula in 1983. Parker later visited UFO conventions, and in 1993, founded UFO Investigations to generate UFO-related television stories. In September 2011, Hickson died following a heart attack. 14. Terence McKenna Terence Kemp McKenna, an American ethnobotanist and mystic, promoted the responsible use of naturally occurring hallucinogenic herbs. He lectured and wrote on a variety of topics, including psychedelic substances, plant-based entheogens, shamanism, metaphysics, alchemy, language, philosophy, culture, technology, ethnomycology, environmentalism, and the theoretical foundations of human consciousness. He is sometimes referred to as the Timothy Leary of the 90s, one of the leading authorities on the ontological foundations of shamanism, and he was described as the intellectual voice of rave culture. McKenna developed a hypothesis about the nature of time based on fractal patterns he claimed to have uncovered in the I Ching, which he dubbed novelty theory, and proposed that it prophesied the end of time and a shift in consciousness in 2012. His advocacy of novelty theory and its relationship to the Maya calendar is one of the causes contributing to popular belief in the 2012 event. Novelty hypothesis is considered a pseudoscience by experts. 13. Vinny O, the space makeup artist. In sunny Los Angeles, California, one makeup artist has spent over $50,000 to become a genderless alien, and so far, this guy is killing it. Vinny O, 22, does not identify as male or female and is considering plastic surgery to help reflect this. Vinny has undergone over 110 cosmetic treatments and is currently considering removing his genitalia, belly button, and nipples, which might cost an additional $160,000. He wants to project an alien-like image. He wants to be a hybrid, neither male nor female. He's longed to be sexless and genderless since he was 17. He has visited doctors to see if it is possible, but has had no success. He does not want others to assume he is trying to become a woman. He can live without sexual organs, so why should he have genitals? Vinny frequently wears heavy black contacts and talons on his fingernails to enhance his otherworldly appearance. He is attempting to awaken people by demonstrating that gender roles in society are meaningless and that we must be better human beings and more tolerant of one another. His purpose is to try transform everyone's perception of what is different than the norm. 12. Travis Walton Travis Walton, an American forestry worker, was allegedly abducted by aliens on November 5, 1975, while working with a logging team in the Apache Sitgreaves National Forest in Heber, Arizona. On October 20, 1975, NBC broadcast The UFO Incident, a special made-for-TV film about the purported alien abduction of Barney and Betty Hill. The film portrayed a motorist walking through the woods, approaching an overhead light when he was struck by a light beam. Within weeks following the broadcast, Walton was reported reported missing to law authorities after walking into the woods towards an overhead light and being illuminated by a beam of light. Police organized several search groups to find the missing man. After five days and six hours, shortly after midnight on November 12th, Walton called his sister from a payphone in Heber, claiming to have reappeared following the abduction. Within days, Walton sold his story to the National Enquirer, which published it nationwide and gave the crew a $5,000 prize. Walton wrote a book about his alleged abduction called The Walton Experience in 1978, which was transformed into the 1993 film Fire in the Sky. Walton's story attracted widespread attention, and he remains a frequent guest on television shows and podcasts. The Walton incident is largely viewed as a fake, especially among UFO and extraterrestrial abduction believers. They mentioned that the Waltons were long-standing UFO enthusiasts and pranksters 
who had recently seen a TV movie about an alleged alien abduction. They claimed that one motivation for the fake abduction was to provide an act of God that would allow the logging crew to avoid a significant financial penalty from the Forestry Service for failing to fulfill their contract by the deadline. 11. Simon Parks, an alien adoptive son. A labor lawmaker has said that he lost his virginity at the age of five to an alien hologram. Simon Parks, a counselor in Whitby, North Yorkshire, claims he has been visited and taken by extraterrestrials since he was in his mother's womb and has no fear of them. The 53-year-old went on to say that anyone who thought his beliefs made him an unacceptable spokesman for Stakesby should not be concerned, since the aliens never take him during meetings because they dislike large crowds. Crowds. Parks stated that the type of extraterrestrial he was most regularly visited by were mantids, who were green and seven feet tall, and presented a depiction of one who frequently came to visit him while wearing a cloak. Parks, aware that some people cannot handle the truth, suggested that anyone who felt he was unsuitable for the position of counselor in Whitby instead vent their rage on those members of parliament who stole money, defrauded the country, got others to take penalty points for them, and on the great tycoons and bankers who almost destroyed Britain. Parks has previously spoken openly about his disagreements with his wife after disclosing that he had a child named Zarka with an alien he refers to as the Cat Queen. He stated that he has sexual intercourse with the alien around four times times every year. Parks, who spends hours painting his extraterrestrial encounters to help him cope with them, claims the only thing he remembers after meeting the aliens is them telling him he will never be hurt. 10. Dean Lindsay Extraterrestrial real estate refers to claims of land ownership on other planets, natural satellites, or areas of space made by specific organizations or people. Previous claims are not recognized by any authority and lack legal standing. Nonetheless, some people and organizations, including Dean Lindsay, have claimed ownership of celestial bodies such as the moon and are actively involved in selling sections of them through certificates of ownership known as lunar deeds. He got a deed of claim notarized, declaring his ownership of all property known as planets, islands in space, or other things. He then submitted the deed at the Irwin County Courthouse in Osceola, Georgia, and it was entered in the deed book. Lindsay became well known as the man who owned the universe after bringing his ownership rights to the attention of media. However, skeptics questioned what gave Irwin County the authority to provide deeds to the heavenly bodies. 9. Calvin Parker, participant in the Pascagoula incident. Charles Hickson never regretted the attention he received after telling authorities he saw an unusual flying object and its passengers 40 years ago on the banks of the Pascagoula River. Until his death in 2011, Hickson shared his story with anybody who would listen. However, Calvin Parker Jr., the other witness in one of the most high-profile UFO cases in American history, has never accepted what he claims was a visit by gray, crab-clawed creatures from another world. He claims the experience on October 11, 1973, flipped his life upside down. Parker was startled by the sudden influx of unwanted attention, with television crews and UFO enthusiasts overrunning Walker Shipyard, where he and Hickson worked. He sought to avoid the spotlight for decades, moving repeatedly before relocating to Mississippi's Gulf Coast in recent years. The occurrence generated headlines, spurred a worldwide wave of UFO sightings, and became one of the most extensively investigated incidents in history. Skeptics varied from the deputies who first interviewed the men to an author who attempted to find flaws in the account, and Parker himself has had conflicting feelings about whether he was visited by aliens or demons. Parker, now 58, was 18 when he went fishing with Hickson on a quiet Thursday night after work. As they dangled their lines without much success, the two reported seeing a UFO with blue lights sweep down. They reported that the thing made a zipping noise. Hickson claimed three beings with leathery gray skin and crab-like claws, which he mistook for robotics, grabbed their forearms and levitated them on board the vehicle. He mumbled something, and it appeared that a giant giant floating eye was inspecting him. Parker claims he was conscious, but paralyzed. He was extensively examined, and they returned to the coast, where it all began. The UFO was gone, and Parker said they tried to collect themselves. Hickson needed three shots of liquor from a bottle in his car to calm his nerves before deciding to report what happened. There is no historical sign on the riverbank commemorating the encounter, and no merchants sell UFO souvenirs, but locals remember, although with suspicion and jokes. Parker, for his part, admitted that he has had conflicted feelings about that night in 1973. At one time, he was unsure whether the beings were aliens or demons, but one thing he was sure of, they were real. 8. Betty Hill Betty and Barney Hill were citizens of New Hampshire who lived in Portsmouth, close to the ocean. On September 19, 1961, the couple claimed to have seen lights approaching them in the sky late at night as they were traveling back from a vacation to Montreal over the White Mountains of New Hampshire. Barney says he saw non-human people in a cigar-shaped object hovering over their automobile through binoculars. The last thing they can remember is that they were 35 miles further on their homeward trek. Their memory of the last two hours of their drive vanished. Barney's shoes were severely 
severely scratched, and Betty's clothing was ripped and stained, but none of them remembered how these or other visible alterations to their automobile and possessions had occurred. The pair was able to recollect identical details of an alien abduction after undergoing hypnosis therapy. As a result of her encounter, Betty rose to prominence in the field of UFO studies, and the media attention the couple's tale garnered helped to establish her as a global celebrity. Even now, the way extraterrestrial encounters are covered in the media has been influenced by their accounts of what they saw and experienced that evening. The Hills were active government servants in their seaside New Hampshire village, despite being most renowned for their abduction and relationship with UFOs. Barney served on a local board of the U.S. Civil Rights Commission, and they were both NAACP members. 7. John Mack John Edward Mack was an American psychiatrist, author, and psychiatry professor. From 1977 to 2004, he was the chair of Harvard Medical School's Department of Psychiatry. Mack was awarded the Pulitzer Prize in 1977 for his book, A Prince of Our Disorder, about T.E. Lawrence. Mack's therapeutic interests included child and adolescent psychology, as well as religious psychology. He was also a pioneering researcher in the psychology of adolescent suicide, and drug addiction, and he eventually expanded into the psychology of extraterrestrial abduction encounters. In the early 1990s, Mack initiated a decade-long psychiatric study of 200 men and women who had experienced recurring alien encounters. He initially believed that such people were suffering from mental disease, but when no visible illnesses were found in the people he examined, his curiosity was sparked. His later studies expanded to include a broader discussion of the benefits of an expanded definition of reality, one that allows for experiences that may not match the Western materialist paradigm, but have a significant impact on people's lives, nonetheless. 6. Sue Jameson Sue Jameson apparently experienced alien abduction since she was a young woman. The experiences were traumatic, but Sue has managed to overcome her fear, among other things, by painting her visitors. We can see one of the paintings of the alien in question in the video, and it's scary, to say the least. The first abduction Sue remembers occurred when she was 19, when a pulsating blue light admitted its way across her bedroom. But even though she felt a presence, she was terrified to turn around, until she finally mustered the courage to look and noticed two small gray beings making her faint. After the experience, she was abducted several more times and felt the world was no longer a safe place. 5. Marshall Applewhite Marshall Applewhite led the Heaven's Gate religious cult in Texas. He was a self-proclaimed prophet who borrowed rhetoric from science fiction and scripture. In 1997, he led his group in a mass suicide in the hopes of being transported into space. Bonnie Lou Nettles, his close partner, felt they were the two mentioned in the Book of Revelation, sent on an important mission. The group tried numerous unorthodox diets, and sex, drinking, and smoking were prohibited. Lying and disobeying the rules were both regarded serious sins. Applewhite and Nettles also valued uniformity, with members wearing baggy clothing and short hair to conceal their gender and sexuality. In the 1980s, the group relocated indoors, renting residences in numerous numerous areas, including Dallas. Some members even began acquiring jobs in the outside world under fictitious names. Applewhite was dealt a heartbreaking blow in 1985 when Nettles died of cancer. He'd lost his spiritual partner and appeared to be struggling for a while. By the late 1980s, however, Applewhite had regained his enthusiasm for evangelizing and began spreading the word about the impending end of the world. Applewhite became interested in the Hale-Bopp comet after it was discovered in 1995. He regarded the comet as a sign that a spaceship was on its way to transport them to the next level. As the Hale-Bopp comet approached Earth in 1997, Applewhite and his disciples prepared to leave this world. On March 21st, they had a last supper at a restaurant, ordering the same thing, turkey pot pie, cheesecake with blueberries, and iced tea. A day or two later, when the comet was closest to the globe, Applewhite and his followers committed suicide by consuming a cocktail of vodka and barbiturates. The bodies were all clothed identically in purple shrouds. Many people were startled and disturbed by the mass suicide that occurred at Heaven's Gate. The media broadcast parts from a rambling video created by Applewhite soon before the suicides, in which they explained their objective and encouraged others to join them. Members also captured exit footage. However, these did little to soothe the followers' families or help the rest of the world understand their dramatic, unexplainable actions. 4. The Aarons Family Although they didn't realize it until the early 1990s, Dan and Joyce Aarons, husband and wife, were abducted by aliens in West Plains, Missouri in the fall of 1976, sparking events that would not only engulf them but also affect their children, both at the time and years later. Indeed, the encounters that would change the Aarons family's lives are arguably among the most intense episodes of repeated extraterrestrial abduction ever documented. Although some individuals suspect that the family arranged the events, a detailed examination of the facts of the case contradicts this and reveals that the family's accounts are highly plausible. Many facts about the R 
Karn's encounters are likewise consistent with many other claims of extraterrestrial abductions throughout the world and over the years. The Aaron's encounters, like many other incidents of apparent alien abduction, represent only a minor portion of the larger picture of UFO and alien riddles. 3. John Broberg How can a trusted but severely abusive family friend get away with snatching you as a child twice, apparently assisted by aliens anxious to preserve their planet. Robert Berktold was a friend of the Brobergs. As a churchgoer and community stalwart, he made the family feel unique. When John was kidnapped, her parents couldn't think Berktold wished her harm. Bob Berktold drove away with her one day after telling Broberg's parents he was taking the child horseback riding. Berktold kept her captive with an elaborate ruse, claiming they had been taken by aliens and that Jan needed to collaborate with the aliens. But Berktold did not just kidnap Broberg once. He entrapped Broberg's religious parents in such a complex web of trust and shame that he was able to persuade the family to drop the most serious charges against him, allowing him to spend time with their young daughter and sexually abuse her, and, in the most shocking twist of all, kidnap her a second time when she was 14. After five weeks, the FBI hunted down John and Birchtold, but John was too afraid to tell anyone about the aliens or to admit that she had been abused. Over the next decade, John cautiously acknowledged what had happened to her, sought counseling, and rebuilt her life. Burke's told fled, returning over three decades later, popping up and harassing John at public speaking events. John brought stalking charges against him and eventually faced her abuser in court, but he killed himself before he could be found guilty, hence only served 15 days for raping and abusing John, as well as future abuse of other children. 2. Claude Maurice Marcel Vorillon Realism is a controversial UFO religion that believes life on Earth was created by extraterrestrials. Founded in 1974, the order reportedly has 70,000 members today and enjoys tax-exempt status in the United States saying that sexuality is a gift of pleasure from aliens to humanity. Humans, descendants of the angelic extraterrestrials known as the Elohim, can prepare for their return to Earth, which is predicted in 2035, through sexual meditation, genetically engineered foods, human cloning, and Las Vegas meetups. Followers refer to it as a religion, but others describe it as a sect or cult. Realism's official symbol is a combination of the Zionist community's Star of David and the swastika, which was seized by Hitler. The Raelians use the hexagram as a symbol to depict the infinite and cyclical nature of life. It's also the focal point of the so-called embassy they hope to construct to greet the aliens when they return for the apocalypse revelation. At this point, the ultimate messengers will pay us a visit in their flying saucers and establish political and commercial relations. They believe in scientific progress rather than God. Raelians revere Moses, Jesus, and Buddha as prophets, led by a 71-year-old Frenchman named Rael. The creator and self-proclaimed messiah stated that he was visited by UFOs and chosen as the prophet to preach their message. He depicts the extraterrestrials as having faces full of love and offer him a book of their teachings, the book which tells the truth, which currently operates as the Raelian Bible. Raelism is still on the edges of society, but it's becoming increasingly popular. They have frequent online meetups and run a happiness academy and are popular in Japan. Rael considers himself an educator and believes he is doing the right thing, despite his unconventional idea. 1. Billy Meyer Edward Albert Meyer, also known as Billy, is the creator of a UFO religion called the Free Community of Interests for the Border and Spiritual Sciences and Ufological Studies. Meyer claims to have regular contact with extraterrestrial creatures known as the Pledgerin. Throughout the 1970s, he also offered metal samples, sound recordings, and film footage. Meyer claims to be the seventh reincarnation of six prophets from Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Skeptics and ufologists have widely accused Meyer of fraud, claiming he used models to create hoax images of alien spaceships. Meyer's prophecies frequently blame Jews for coming calamities. In 1997, Meyer's ex-wife informed interviewers that his images were of spaceship models he built using garbage can lids, carpet tacks, and other household things, and that the claims he related about his encounters with aliens were also fake. After seeing these videos, it's clear that many of these people are delusional and downright nasty. Which one was your favorite? Why don't you let us know in the comments below? Well, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give us a like and let us know in the comments what you think. Check out our other videos and subscribe to be part of the fun. Click on the notification icon so you can see our new videos as soon as they're uploaded. Thank you for watching and see you next time.